Welcome back to the Bluegrass. We're at the world famous Hollywood ATV Park in Stanton, Kentucky, and it is beautiful out here, guys. You have to stop by and bring your four wheeler, bring your uh, side by side, bring your motorcycle, whatever you got. Bring it out here and uh, have you a good time because there's some good people down here. They run a top notch shop, and the trails are awesome. But uh, how we ended up down here today was uh, I had to break it to my buddy that uh, he's going home tomorrow, and he just looked at me, <laughs> and he was kind of sad and downtrodden, you know, and you could tell what he was thinking. He was like, what, Stoney? No more adventures? And uh, so since I knew what he was thinking, I looked at Eli, and I said, Eli, get the four-wheelers, put them on the wagon, let's take King Morky to Hollerwood, and let's have one last big party before he goes home. So you guys can join us and we're going to show you around and we're going to tell you why you ought to bring your four-wheeler down here to Hollerwood in Stanton, Kentucky. That old duck over there, Eli, just hanging out. All right, guys, now where we are now is what's called Sun Oil Lake. And this is one of my favorite spots at Hollerwood, uh, especially if you come down here during the week because there's not a lot of people. You know, everybody works and so they can only come on the weekends. Uh, but come over here and show them what we're looking at, Eli. I mean, is this not beautiful, guys? It's the middle of a Friday afternoon and uh, we're just out here hanging out. Got a beautiful lake, me, Eli, an old duck, <laughs> and the King Morky. Oh, what do you think, King Morky? We'll get the little Morky out, see if he wants to walk on this, uh, <laughs> on this metal grating. He's going to be like, no, Stoney, don't do it, don't do it. Oh, but I think he'll be okay. Oh, very nice. Oh, we'll just sit down here. <laughs> what do you think he's like hey man i'm glad i put all this <laughs> these last few weeks putting in that work on that environmental socialization learning to be sure-footed because <laughs> uh, this is some crazy uh, extruded metal grating here like look i'm going to walk around it with him and he's got to be real careful because his little feet will go right through those holes dang very nice oh the king morky is starting to get the hang of it very nice. Now that old duck has swum right over here to see what we're up to. I got to watch out because that Morky might jump off in the water and attack him. Look how sure-footed this little guy is though. Dang, I'm so proud. It's a great place to have an adventure. And if you don't have a Morky to bring on an adventure, guys, you can bring your girlfriend down here, or boyfriend, whatever you got. I'm not judgmental, but uh, you can bring them down here, bring you a bologna sandwich, a, a big hunk of tomato, some sweet tea, and just, you know, sit here and enjoy the nature and if you come like i said if you come on the weekdays guys i mean basically you'll have the park almost all to yourself i mean you might run into me and eli and maybe a morky or two <laughs> buddy's decided that uh, sun oil lake is his favorite but we've got a couple other spots we want to show you so come on let's get back on the four wheelers and get to going i'm ready Grew up a little bit. All right, guys, we're at our second favorite spot in Hollerwood, which is a big rock formation and cave. It's real cool. Like right as you're going down to Sun Oil Lake, you just look up to your left and there's a, you know, a big cave system and it's super neat. And it's an awesome place. Uh, <laughs> well, it's an awesome place for two things, really. One, it's an awesome place to, you know, sit back and have a cold beverage with your buddies. And two, it's an awesome place to let Morkies get down and uh, pretend to be wolves. <laughs> Come on, Morky. You can come up here and pretend to be a wolf, and I'll pretend to be a caveman. Come on, buddy. Where'd you go? You can do it. 
Now, this is one of the things you'll run into anywhere in Kentucky, guys, is these dang old uh, sticker bushes. So whenever you're out traipsing around, doing environmental socialization with your dog or hanging out with your buddies, be careful, because these sticker bushes are everywhere. Now this is a really neat spot. We'll let Eli catch us here. But man, how old is this? You know, millions of years. Can't you just think back a million years ago and instead of me riding my four-wheeler up here, it's a caveman came up here, oh, with his wolf, and he's dragging him a deer. Maybe he's dragging him a cave lady by her hair up here. They're going to have a party. Who knows? Come on, wolf. Get up here. Come on, little buddy. You can do it. Uh, you guys think a caveman talked to his wolf like I talked to Buddy? Come on. Come on. Oh, and I wonder if a caveman would have been patient like that. Like, see how I'm being patient with Buddy not being able to get up here or not wanting to get up here? I wonder, like, uh, if a caveman would have been getting his little piece of food out and, like, uh, you know, hey, Buddy, come on, I'm going to give you some positive reinforcement if you'll climb these rocks. Or do y'all think that caveman might have just rushed down there and got him and drug him up here? Come on, Buddy, you can do it. Oh, what I'm going to convince him of is that I'm going to leave him here for the wolves to get him if he doesn't come up and find me. And I think that's going to be a valid strategy. So look, I'm going to act like I'm leaving and I'll make Buddy follow me. Oh, I'm going to leave, Buddy. Does he care, Eli? Is he even acting like he cares? <laughs> oh, look, he doesn't even care. <laughs> Come on, you can do it. Come on, buddy. All right, here he comes, gingerly picking his way through here. Dude, I don't know if you're going to qualify as a, you know, cave dog, but he's going to make it. Oh, there he is. Oh, you're a good cave dog. I'll let you in the cave dog club. All right, let's walk back down here and see if we can get him back over those rocks. Mm, guys, when you're doing your environmental socialization you have to be really patient sometimes and you have to be creative you know like i could obviously have just uh rushed down there and got a uh, buddy old caveman style you know but i want him to do it on his own if i can get him to do it on his own now it's getting kind of late in the day because eli and i got a late start uh, so i might not be able to accomplish all my goals being as patient as i want to be but we're gonna give it to we're gonna give it the old college try. Good boy. And so look, he's picking it up. Come on, let's get back here in the damp part. Now, guys, as you're watching here, you know, and you're seeing this cave system, you're seeing this little rock overhang here. Uh, I want you to realize that whatever you see, which is interesting, there's no telling what Buddy is smelling, which is even way more interesting. Like, cause you can see what's happening right now, but what dogs can do by smelling, they can smell a, a picture of what's happened over the course of the last week or month or, you know, sometimes even multiple months given the, the nature of some types of odors, you know. Like there's no telling what all's come in here and marked in this cave or been eaten in this cave. Good boy. Come on, buddy, you can do it. Whoa. <laughs> Maybe Buddy's the smart one here. Oh, buddy, buddy, come on. You can do it. Come on, come on. Now see how he's kind of staying away from these big old rocks. He's probably got a little bit more sense than what I have. Come on, buddy, you can do it. You're not very heavy. You're not gonna move these rocks. Oh, very nice. I'm gonna give him just a little bit of help. Let's see if I can get him up there. Go on, cave dog. <laughs> Eli, if we were suddenly transported back in time, me and this dog here, and we had to fight a caveman and a wolf for, for possession of this cave. Who do you think would win? Uh, I, think would be food. <laughs> I think they would probably eat me and the King Morky, uh, you know, all at the same time. All right, let's go see if we can't find us a, another cool space to check out here at Hollywood. Oh, come on, buddy. We're headed to Picnic Point. Dang. I gotta get some new shoes. I'm gonna come out of here traipsing around these mountains. <laughs> well, 
Oi. All right, guys, now we're at, uh, well, you know, what I'm saying for this video is my third favorite spot, but uh, I got a caveat to that. You know how when we went to Sun Oil Lake, I said that's my favorite spot at Hollerwood, and it is, okay? And then my second favorite spot is, uh, obviously, I like the cave and the cave overhang. It's cool because I like pretending like I'm a caveman, and you know, my buddy, the King Mork, he likes to pretend he's a wolf. But this is, uh, this is you know, this sometimes can be, the number one spot here at Hollywood. And let me tell you when that sometimes would be. Let's say that some of you fellas out there in YouTube land, you got a question that you need to ask a special lady in your life, you know? <sighs> Eli, is there any better place in the world to ask a lady a special question than right here? No. Right here in Stanton, Kentucky at Picnic Point in the world famous Hollywood. You bring your lady up here and you ask her that special question. She looks out here, you know, you get down on one knee ask her that special question and she looks at you you'll be beaming you'll be happy wanting to spend the rest of your lives together she looks out that beautiful bluegrass wilderness guys i guarantee you the answer to that question is going to be yes and when that lady says yes you guys can all email me say hey thanks uncle stoney for turning me on to that magic spot picnic point at the world famous hollywood atv park all right good luck fellas